Alright, so I wouldn't call this feature completely new, uh, but it's new enough to those of you guys that picked up your vehicle is about four to five years from today. Now, most of you guys might not have even known that this feature existed, but it was here and now it's returning. Tesla has just released a software update that restores regenerative braking profiles. And this means that you have the options to select whether you want the vehicle to coast or to use its full power. But before we even get to that, let's talk about this software update and this version number is 2023.6.100.1. That definitely is a weird and very long version number. Don't know what the idea behind that really is as we were just on 2023.12.1. I think they're using these decimal iterations just to show that there is one or two features that's being added. But what does confuse me is the fact that we are on 2023.12.1. 12.1 and then we're actually going back a number which is now 2023.6 so if you guys have any idea why that's even the case let me know in the comments below because i'm super confused there but now let's talk about this overall update you do have two new things here one of them being the regenerative braking profile that i mentioned earlier and then the other one being the energy gauge and it has some display improvements not too much of a change there but in simple terms what we're getting from this update here here is the fact that you do have a setting now that lets you turn it from a standard to a low profile, meaning that your vehicle will now just coast as you take off your foot from the accelerator. Now, this was available in earlier cars back in the days where it mimics the idea of the ICE cars. Your standard gas car with the exception of manual transmissions, if you let go of the accelerator or the gas pedal, the vehicle is just going to continue to coast automatically. More recently, in modern cars, as soon as you take your foot off the gas, it will jump into its neutral gear and it'll let your vehicle just coast even further without using that much gas. So the same situation applies to your Tesla vehicle with this profile turned on to low. However, it doesn't get the same advantages that you would get from a gas vehicle. So first, let's talk about the disadvantages and then we'll talk about the advantages after and I think you guys really like this. Now, unfortunately, if you are just used to the driving of an EV, you'll know that as long as you take your foot off the accelerator, it's going to recuperate a lot of the energy back into the battery and this is where you get a lot more range. Now the same is not going to happen if you toggle this into low just because it's going to try to coast a lot more than what it's recouping back into the motors. Now I don't know the exact specs of dual motor versus rear wheel drive but I do think this is going to affect the dual motor vehicles much more because there is two motors in the back trying to recoup the same amount of energy and that's what it's going to get back as a total number feeding into the battery versus a rear wheel drive where it only has one motor. But now with both being on the low profiles option for regenerative braking, I think the dual motor is going to take a lot bigger hit than the single motors. Now the second disadvantage to this is you're going to be wearing down your brake pads a lot more when you do want to stop at a red light or a stop at a stop sign. This is where you're going to be smashing onto the brake pedal and using your physical brakes and disc so you're going to be having to replace not just the brake pads but eventually also you're going to have to replace the rotors so if i stop there alone it's already enough to push you away from turning this setting down to low but there is more and i think this one is going to be the biggest factor to setting this to low if you've gotten used to one pedal driving at this point like i did you're going to regret turning this to low ever because on standard mode as soon as you let off the accelerator the vehicle is going to come to a complete stop and that means that you never have to move your foot over to the brakes. Although in low setting, you're still going to get a lot of the stopping motion that you typically would feel. However, it's not going to be that aggressive to the point where the vehicle would completely stop. So you definitely have to deal with that. But yeah, those are the three biggest things that I can think of right off the top of my head about why you shouldn't be using this feature or not touching it at all once it's available. But now let's go on to the advantages. This toggle ultimately helps people that are trying transitioning from ICE vehicles over to EVs. I know it's not that hard to do. However, a lot of people do get used to the coasting uh, motion of the vehicle once they let off the accelerator. Jumping directly into an EV for the first time and doing the exact same motion is going to get your car to suddenly jerk and stop and that's just going to freak them out a lot more. This is where this feature comes in. Now, I've personally seen a lot of people, including my own family, picking up their Model Y for the very first time and they expected the vehicle to be behave the exact same way as every other vehicle they've had previously. But this is where they were in for a surprise as soon 
as they let off, the entire car just stopped completely and this is what scared them so much that they've almost decided to go with another gas vehicle. However, just within a few weeks of driving it and getting used to it, now they love it to the point where they don't even want to ever put their foot onto the brakes ever again. I think this is the thing with EVs. It takes a little bit of getting used to and eventually you get to that point where it even surpasses any other method. So realistically, if you don't want to scare somebody away from EVs, uh, this is the perfect method here. And giving people the option to choose low versus standard is really great generally. You want to have options for everybody out there. There are going to be people that prefer using the lower settings than the standard settings. Just give them a little bit more time and I'm sure that the standard option is going to be the default option in their profile. Now realistically, this is all for newer drivers and all the things that would benefit them. But what about you and I where we personally been driving EVs for a while now? I think there still is some advantages to this. For me, the biggest advantage to this is during winter conditions and it applies in a lot of scenarios that I've faced with the regenerative braking. Obviously, this doesn't apply to places down in the south like SoCal and Texas and Florida. You guys will never know what we're experiencing up here. You guys are just extremely lucky. But anywhere other than those places, year round, we're gonna get some kind of rainfall or some kind of snowfall that's gonna be too much for the system. A lot of times in extreme rain and harsh snowfalls, I do get a lot of jerking when I let off the accelerator and this can be very nerve wracking when I start to feel the vehicle fishtail a little bit. These are the times where I really wish that I did have an option to disable regenerative braking completely or at least set it to low. And this would allow me to control the vehicle a lot better in these conditions. Now on top of that, there's even the fact that regenerative braking is limited when the vehicle is completely full or in inclement weather. I know this has been fixed with meshing of brake pads as well as the regen system. However, I am very thankful that we are also getting this option as well. I think options are always a great thing. So let the consumer, let the customer pick what they want. So yeah, overall, I'm really glad that Tesla is doing this, is giving everybody the choice of what they want and how they would get used to it. Now, there is one thing that does give me a little bit of concern is the fact that their EPA ratings are tied to this regen system. The fact that they're getting this high EPA rating in range is that they are using the regen system. Now, being that this new software update is going to lower the regen system or give the option for it to be lower, EPA could substantially drop from this point because it depends on the driver and the person testing it. So I'm pretty certain that in the near future here, Tesla is going to put an asterisk right next to the range and letting you know that this could possibly go from this point to this point, depending on what setting you have for the regen. So anyways, that's just an update for the software. I hope you guys enjoyed it. If you guys did, please hit that subscribe button, that bell notification. And this is John once again. Peace out.